And so I'm here to talk about zoos and aquariums and how I think they're beneficial for zoos um, or for um, endangered animals and their protection. So zoos and aquariums are often criticized but um, and oftentimes debated on whether they should still operate. Uh, while zoos were one time conceptualized as a form of entertainment, they have evaluate, evolved into a evolved into a source of education, conservation, and play an important role in uh, wildlife research. Zoos have been successful in, one, funding captive breeding programs that focus on animal reproduction and introducing these animals into the wild after proper preparation, improving global biodiversity by funding projects which protect animal habitats, and ensuring animals have sustainable environments, veterinary care, group gatherings, and involvement programs which enhance their physical and cognitive state. These are some standards inspected for the efficiency uh, under the Animal, Wel Animal Welfare Act, which was a law passed in 1966 to protect animals in captivity. An example of a successful breeding and reintroduction program is that of the Arabian Oryx. According to the Arizona Zoological Society, the oryx from the Arabian Peninsula in droves until they were hunted to extinction in 1972. The Phoenix Zoo in Arizona began a captive breeding program in 1962, when it was discovered that these animals had nearly vanished from the regions they once populated. The zoo was successful in breeding over 200 oryxes and introducing them into the desert uh, the Saudi Arabia, uh, regions of Saudi Arabia, where they now populate at approximately 1,100. Biodiversity is the variety of all species on Earth. It is different plants, animals, and microorganisms, their, uh, microorganisms, their genres, and the terrestrial, marine, and freshwater ecosystems of which they are a part which helps build fu functioning ecosystems for us, having clean water, air, pest control, and other services. The United Nations declared 2010 as the year of international biodiversity. According to an audit conducted that same year on in-house conservation programs by the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums, an organization supporting zoo and aquarium education and conservation advancement since 1935, 113 programs were measured as being successful, being successful in helping to improve the conditions of high profile threatened species and habitats and biodiversity rich regions of the world. They concluded investments made by zoos and aquariums, particularly financial. These projects reached overall impact scores of a magnitude suggestive of an appreciable contribution to a global biodiversity conservation. Zoos and aquariums abide uh, under the Animal Welfare Act, a federal law enacted in 1966 to help uh, protect at captive animals. This was established to form minimum care standards for animals in the, these facilities, including adequate housing, handling, sanitation, nutrition, water, veterinary care, and protection from extreme weather and temperatures. The Animal Welfare Act requires facilities be licensed and registered or risk having their activities involved in animals shut down. Once registered, these locations are subject to unannounced inspections. Failure to meet these standards can result in fines, having animals confiscated, license and registration revoked, or cease and desist orders. In conclusion, zoos are essential in ensuring wild animal populations continue to exist in the future and provide an educational facility uh, for the public to learn about endangered animals and the destructive patterns happening to their habitats.
All right, Christina, the uh, opening really starts with the proposition, and uh, you, we don't really know that it's the proposition until you get through it and you start correcting yourself, so I think you want to be a little more careful about that. Uh, probably you want to save the proposition for after you've given us that context. You do have a little bit of background about the criticism of zoos and uh, the way some of the challenges that they've been faced with over the years. Uh, and then I think you could probably put your proposition in there and make it a little bit clearer. It, like I said, it sounded a little um, like you had to fix it halfway through the realization that you have both zoos and aquariums. Um, you know, that probably needs to be simplified to be a single term. There is a preview of the contents of the material, so I know that you're going to be talking about uh, funding captive breeder programs, biodiversity, and sustaining the environment. So I, I appreciated that at the beginning of the speech, so I know where you're headed. However, when you get to the body of the speech, you don't really signpost those uh, points as we go along. Did I give you guys the example of Texas? Mm -hmm. Okay, you just were Texas just now. You know, you told us it was coming, and then the next thing I know, we're driving by it going, oh, there it is. You know, uh, so you want to signpost those points as you get to them. I, I, I mean, I heard you talking about, and I knew that it fit in that particular category, but you've got to remember that uh, audiences are not necessarily good at listening. Listening is hard. People think it's easy. I just point my ears in the direction of a person talking. It's not. You've got to help them out a lot. So uh, a little bit more signposting in the body of the speech would help. Your support on the first point basically comes from a single example. It's a good example about the oryx, uh, or however you say it, uh, and I think that uh, it's a, a good illustration, but that's the only one you have there, and so uh, I'm not sure how confident I am that all of the zoos around the world are engaged in doing this kind of thing or have made a difference, and you've got an example that's 40 years old, because uh, that breeding program started, what, in 1972, you said? Yeah. yeah or, and so, or they disappeared from the environment. So, I mean, it, it is contemporary, because we do have 1,100 of them that are still out there in Saudi Arabia somewhere. But, uh, uh, like I said, the, the breeding program itself started years before that, and that's the only one that you point to, and it seems to me like that's a... That's a huge inferential leap to make from a singular example there. So it would be best if you had uh, some other in instances there. There's not really any statistical data in any of these areas either. And it seems to me like there's probably a breakdown of uh, funding that is available for these programs, uh, where they get their money. And that might help also build that argument a little bit to suggest that this is, in fact, a widespread practice among zoos and aquariums to address those kinds of issues. Uh, you did have several pieces of testimony. It is a little awkward. If, if we were engaged in this argument, uh, let's say, and the, uh, your opponent was uh, uh, speaking on behalf of PETA, uh, I would be suggesting that PETA is perhaps not necessarily the most reliable source because they are you know, emotionally involved and they have kind of an extremist agenda. In your situation, I'm saying, well, the people that you're quoting are basically the people who are under attack defending themselves. Do we have any independent authorities that talk about these things? Maybe the United Nations group is okay, but the, you know, like the, zo the Zoological Association says, hey, we're doing a hell of a job. Uh, patting yourself on the back for work that you're getting criticized by somebody else. Unless you've got some particular data that you can use to show that, it sounds a little self-serving, so it, would be, it might be better to have some additional information on those particular points. There's plenty of factual data about the Animal Welfare Act. Um, one of the things I think that might be demonstrated is that, like you talked about at the beginning, that zoos have in fact changed dramatically in the last 50 years since the Animal Welfare Act has been put into place, that you kind of suggested that they were you know, uh, entertainment venues or you know, places with lions and cages, that kind of thing, and that it's all different now. Well, how about some examples about how it's different and uh, how the zoos have made these actions and done these things? I know that these are the rules that they're supposed to function under. Do they? You know, that's the kind of thing that I think uh, would add to your uh, presentation. Uh, delivery things, uh, I, you're doing a little bit more reading than you want to. I know you're going to the quotes quite a bit, uh, but you need to talk to us a little bit more, especially when you're explaining the basic points underneath your argument. All right, thank you. It's tough being first, but we